Hi, my name is Saul Montoya. This time we are going to talk about the 12 best software for the 12 best open source software for water resources. So this is a list of the most useful and the most updated and the most practical, documented and supported software on water resources. So we begin our list. In the first place or on the geographical information system ranking we are going to talk about quantum gis quantum gis is the open source gis software that has the whole capabilities of what um, a commercial software like rgis could have so it has options for spatial analysis raster analysis cross sections uh, we can generate maps, we can generate, uh, we can put like Google Earth on the background of our maps, uh, we can have like um, tools for like plugins, um, we can do a lot of, of styles, we can put labels on our data, so it's really a powerful GIS software and it comes with a lot of um, tools um, available. And, it's in, and it's in the, there is a team that is developing this software a lot. Here we can see the graphical user interface of GIS with some data of a geological map. No? Okay, so the second software is SagaGIS. SagaGIS is a tool for geospatial analysis. It do not have any fancy graphical user interface. So what does it mean? So it means that we see just limited option on the graphical user interface but what is most powerful is when you deal with spatial analysis so you can do you can correct the surface like hydrological correction of surface you can delimit the basins you can get the, the watershed network you can do a lot of stuff of uh, interpolation like it has a type of interpolation or even more and is the the amount of tool that this have is unbelievable and is is a matter that you explore in every time that we open sagagis we find more tools and it's entirely free okay so we have this then we change to river modeling so on the first in the first the not the first, but one of the simplest and powerful tools is HECRAS. HECRAS is a 1D model for that implements the Manning, form, the Manning formula and where you can assess the flood potential and like you can delimitate which is the the area of a, or like cross section of a river associated with a, with a flow so this is uh, the graphical user the graphical user interface is very powerful and it, with gis you can with QGIS you can you can process all the data in order to to put it here in hecras hecras is the option and if you want to model some process of sediment transport and erosion you can use iic mm -hmm. IREC is developed by the Geological Service of the United States plus some universities in Japan and is in, uh, the team is developing this software very actively so like and there is a newspaper where you can sign and get news about the, the um, I talk about erosion, I talk about sending transport but those are not the only features that has IREC then we have Hydrological models. If we deal with hydrological models, HEC HM, HMS is the most simple option. I mean, it's not that it's so simple, but it has a good user interface. It's well documented. Like you can you can pick a basin, you can pick some like a ridge, like a river. You can put the map behind. So it's really powerful. It's really powerful. It, uh, and it can it it can process like like hydrological process as precipitation, runoff, interception, vegetation, base flow, 
canopy, maybe snow, something like that. So it's um, it's really it's not so hard to learn and it's well documented. I suggest to to get a look on this. Then we have a SWAT. A SWAT is a hydrological model, but it's a model to assess um, soil. So is I mean, it can represent all the hydrological features, plus it can evaluate the, the change of land cover on the hydrological cycle, like for example, or like the contaminant, like the transport of nutrients on the on a basin-wide scale. And a good news on SWAT that it also can run on QGIS because there is QSWAT, so it's a, it's a plugin that you install in QGIS and then you can run to SWAT. Then we have PRMS. PRMS is a distributed hydrological model. It's based on physical process. So what does it mean? That every process on the water cycle is actually a formula based on physical parameters. And then um, you can deal with a basin uh, divided in 500 parts called your hydrological response units. And like you need like 50 parameters per per sub basin uh it's really is do not it has a graphical user interface but it do not have a like a pre-processing tool like you have to do it mostly in gis and then insert it and prepare the files for for pyramids uh but it's really powerful you get really after modeling and calibrated with pyramids you have the feeling that you are doing something like you know what is inside the model and another advantage is that pyramids can deal like with 500 uh, with the basin divided in 500 plus it can deal with um, 10 years or maybe 40 years of precipitation on a daily basis so it's really powerful in this section then we change to groundwater models this mod flow is the most widely known groundwater saturated groundwater model developed by the Geological Service of the US plus is uh, is in, is has been evolving since the 88 of the last century um, it has package for unsaturated it has package for unsaturated flow it has package for discontinuities like karst uh it can deal with complex topographies with uh, mod flow nwt plus um, it can develop uh, steady flow plus untransient flow um, is um i have experience maybe with 10 years of of mod flow and i am still learning a lot of stuff but because it's fun if you mod flow has a, a free word, a free graphical user interface that is called model muse here we have a, a model muse project where you can put on a graphical user interface like the rivers you can put the lakes you can put you can you can evaluate where how a particle is flowing you can put recharge evapotranspiration and many other boundary conditions so ModFlow and ModelMuse is the option on free software to model groundwater flow. And then we have M3T, M3, MT3DMS, that is the contaminant transport. It's solute transport, but mostly used for contaminant assessment. So we can evaluate how minerals are have been transported on the groundwater flow and how uh, nutrients can also minerals when we deal with uh, with mining and nutrients when we deal with agriculture and it's only one phase so what does it mean that the that the solute is uh, is solute i mean is dissolved uh, for two phases there is another software um, and then we change to another topic that is computational fluid dynamics computational fluid dynamics is um, it actually models the flow i mean like the flow on a river flow on a weir flow uh, also as well can model 
water or air and it can, it can model compressible and uncompressible flow and as well it can model uh, what, what else can model uh, Newtonian flows are non-Newtonian flows. It really has a lot of um, libraries to model different types. Um, it's not in water resources. It's not so developed, but this is the option when you talk. Since it can model air it, in, on a special industries and plus process industries do use this software even more or like more often, no? but open phone, it works on Linux, so if you are in Windows, maybe you have to change to Linux. Then we have Python. Python is a programming language, and why do you have to learn a programming language if you want to deal with water resources? Because Python has already some package where you can, like, you can do machine learning, you can do algebra, like matrix algebra, you can do, you can process 50 years of precipitation with Python, you can do analysis of, of principal components, and then you, you can, the, the reason why we choose Python and R is that both are really easy to understand. What does it mean? That here we have an interface of Jupyter Notebook, and if you read the code, the code is really user-friendly, so you don't have to figure out what the, what the code is doing, because just you can understand it just by reading. Um, that's something very good of Python, it's a non-compiled software. And then the last one of the, of the list is R. R is also as well, a Python is a programming language, but R was pro was programmed or is a software just for statistical analysis and mathematical analysis. It do not have another in another function in the end. And what in which points R is more powerful than Python? Both are really user friendly, but R uh, is more powerful when you want to do spatial interpolations. For example, maybe there is another type of of examples. Well, thank you. Please follow us by Facebook slash Hatari Water and Twitter slash Hatari Water. If you like this, if you like this, uh, this video, just like it and share it with your friends. If you didn't like it, just put your comments below and we hope to produce another good videos for you. Thank you.